There is a growing threat to our health, and we may just be sitting on the solution. However, in recent years, there have been discoveries that tell us sitting is a deadly hazard of modern life. But exactly, what is the reason we spend so much time sitting? Why is it dangerous to us, and how can we prevent further damage? Sedentary behavior can be described as any time spent expending less than 1.5 mets of energy. The most common form being time spent sitting down supported by a chair or seat. To be honest, sedentary behavior is one of the biggest crimes against humanity and the worst part is that it's inflicted onto ourselves by ourselves. Sedentary behavior is known to be the fourth leading cause of all-cause mortality worldwide. The risks could be catastrophic. We're at a time where it is crucial that we stand up to sedentary life. Current research is showing that even if you are physically active, you might be at risk. Lifestyles could be a big factor in why we are all sedentary. An example of this could be the regular 9 to 5 paradigm. Many jobs are now requiring staff to be sedentary for prolonged periods of time. However, it is not just the job itself that causes us to be sedentary. The commute to work and back is most likely sedentary, the time spent at work often sedentary, and after a long day of mental stress, the mind is tired and naturally seeks to rest, thus adding to the time we spend sitting. Aldi, for example, can require staff to be seated on the tills for up to three hours before taking a 30 minutes break where staff tend to be seated as well. Then in some cases, if busy, they might find themselves on the tills again for a further five hours. So that's eight hours sedentary just at work with only one 30 minute break that is often spent sedentary. It's no surprise that we see a growth in bad health related to being sedentary with jobs requiring people to be seated for longer and longer periods of times without breaks. We now know that if we make a conscious effort to break up time spent sedentary, we can significantly reduce our risk. I would recommend taking any opportunity you get to stand up and walk about, breaking up sedentary time every 30 minutes, as it could have major benefits to our health. Meeting the exercise guideline alone might not be enough. It has been scientifically proven that even if you are physically active, you are still at risk of the detriments to health that being sedentary brings. Um, I work in the film and TV industry. My job is quite active, um, thankfully. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not a person that enjoys sitting around very much. Um, Typically, if, if I am, if it is a day where I'm working, I'll be on my feet most of the day, I'll be carrying things, I'll be lifting things, um, you know, running around, attending to whatever I need to tend to. Um, there are days where, for example, I could be uh, at home all day and I'll just have an office day, I'll just be taking care of admin, catching up on emails, uh, which I don't have time to do when I'm on set. Um, and I do feel... Uh, less energetic overall when I'm at home and I've, I've been indoors all day, I feel more irritable. Um, there are also days where I have to travel. I do have to travel quite a lot in my job, so there are days where I spend an awful lot of time in the car. Uh, and I always try to, I, I often travel out to London I always, and I always try and stop once or twice um, just to stretch my legs um, and for safety as well, obviously. Um, Although I lead quite an active life, uh, I am aware that being sedentary is an independent risk, uh, no matter how how active you are. Um, there are periods in my life where I do have to, I do have to sit down a lot, I, I have to travel a lot uh, for my job, so I, I, I drive around a lot. Um, and I have to make a conscious effort to try and, and break up the time spent sitting down and, and being still and inactive. It has been scientifically proven that even if you are physically active, you are still at risk of the detriments to health that being sedentary brings. If you're in a position of sedentary behaviour for longer than 30 minutes or up to 30 minutes, you should consider taking a break and seriously contemplating the damage that you're doing to your body. You might not be aware of this, but taking a two minute brisk walk 
every 30 minutes has been shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease by up to 50%. Inactivity has been called the silent killer, and quite rightly, the position of the World Health Organization is that it is one of the largest contributors to several diseases that are now common in the developed world, and in fact, some of the largest uh, causes of morbidity and mortality in the developed world. Uh, these are type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and various types of cancer. And um, not only can exercise lower the risk of developing these diseases, but also the act of remaining physically immobile uh, has a, a noted effect of increasing the risk of these diseases. All through human evolution, uh, we've not had the opportunity, except in the last few decades, to live a sedentary lifestyle at all. Uh, most people would undertake manual work, or before that we were hunter-gatherers, we, uh, we were having to walk uh, up to 30 or 40 miles every single day, um, and uh, perform various uh, physically intensive tasks in our daily lives, but now, um, the lifestyle of most people does not reflect our immediate evolutionary history. Now people can go to an office, sit down by driving in their cars where they're sat down. Uh, they sit down and watch TV in the evening. And um, any period of immobility uh, that lasts for over a few hours, the exact figure is, is yet to be determined, but uh, it, it appears to be over even four or five hours of inactivity. Um, causes uh, quite profound uh, biochemical and hormonal changes which are directly detrimental to our health. So what exactly is happening to our bodies when we don't move? Scientists believe that sitting can affect our hormones negatively. If we don't do any movements uh, whatsoever, or very limited movements, compared with, uh, as I've said, the range and extent of movements that we would have to have performed um, prior to the last few decades, then the muscles never receive the stimulation that they need to release the appropriate factors that are, are vital for our health. And actually, inactive muscles even go further and begin to release uh, highly inappropriate factors which uh, produce chronic inflammation. And uh, this is uh, directly linked with the developmental processes of many of the diseases that I mentioned earlier. We know there's a tremendous price to pay for ourselves, but what is the cost to our nation of all this inactivity? In the year 2014 alone, the NHS spent nearly £2 billion treating lifestyle diseases occurring from physical inactivity. Good news is that um, it doesn't take too much time to do uh, enough exercise to combat this inactivity. Um, and uh, recent studies have shown that, in fact, uh, if the intensity is high enough and just a few minutes uh, per day or just a few minutes several days per week, doesn't have to be every day, is enough to combat most of the effects of inactivity. Um, it is a bit of a, a sliding scale and uh, people will get more health benefits and more of exercise they do. Uh, for example, some of the longest lived populations on the, in the world, when you break people down by their demographics and behaviour, include Olympic athletes. There's no doubt in the many benefits of being physically active and reducing time spent sat down. We live in a world surrounded by many distractions, many opportunities to make things simple and easy to access, making it more and more difficult for us to maintain our physical health. What kind of methods could we use to support a more physically active population, bearing in mind the workplace is ever developing to be more and more sedentary? Now, uh, some specific uh, interventions for an activity that um, not many people are currently using, but we, which are possible to use, are um, things such as standing desks in the workplace, so uh, standing Although it's still immobile, uh, you're using your muscles more than you would be sitting and you're also preventing some of the specific postural problems which come with sitting, such as uh, overly tight hamstrings and, and problems with the tissue in the lower back. Critical thing in, in my view is, is just, as I've said, getting this 10 minute slot or 15 minute slot in your day, or if it's one hour, great, no, even better, to 
really push your body through some uh, through some movements. Uh, these should be things which you're capable of doing. You know, you don't have to absolutely kill yourself over, but it should be fairly intense. Um, I'm currently living in Vietnam, and uh, here, when I go to the gym, I quite often see um, people who are taking selfies while they're in the gym. They're, they're on a treadmill, but they're just walking very slowly or, or cycling very slowly. Um, I don't think that's enough. It, it has to be something which uh, elevates your heart rate, um, really activates your metabolism, so your body knows that it's, it's doing something special. You know, it's doing, uh, doing exercise um, and uh, gets get all those uh, energy systems into play. Um, my main recommendations for someone who's able to do it would be something like sprinting or press-ups or squats, some kind of bodyweight calisthenics where you can do fairly intensely, again not uh, with the purpose of injuring yourself, but intensely enough to really wake your body up um, in the space of uh, whatever time you have available. And this is best built into a routine. Understanding is the first step to resolving any problem, and sedentary lifestyle is no exception. Engage in regular physical activity, eat well, and make sure to spend as little time being sedentary as possible.